Good morning. Ooh. Can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. And how are you today? Thank you so much for bearing with us through our uh, technical difficulties. Praise the Lord. All is well now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, honey. I have the best technician in the world. The best technicians in the world. Um, Minister Gianna Hansen and my hubby, Kevin, Pastor Kevin. Praise the Lord. All right. Good morning. I say good morning to Kevin, you. Pastor Kevin. Sorry, honey. Praise the Lord. All right. Good morning. No talking. I say good morning to Kevin. Sorry. I was talking. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing today? It is so good to be with you. It's so good to see you. Now. Y'all, there is a word from the Lord. I am so excited to deliver this word to you. So without further ado, let's not um, spend any more time. Let's get, um, I'm going to declare over, let's get right into it. I'm going to pray. I'm going to declare over you. Then we're going to have our message offering. And then I will give you the word from the Lord. Y'all, the Lord woke me up because I, I want you to stay with me. Don't, don't lose me. The Lord woke me up. I think it was Wednesday morning because I didn't write down the day. It was Wednesday morning, early Wednesday morning. And he said something to me. Okay. So I am going to endeavor to do what he has told me to do um, and expound on this word to you today. So first... Let's pray. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you, we exalt you, we give you praise and glory for this time and for this day. God, we do thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you for the waking us up of this morning. God, I thank for waking us up by faith this morning, God. I thank you, Jesus, for the ability, God, the ability to know you, to hear your voice, to know your voice. Thank you, Jesus, for, for you making us to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God, we praise you. We just honor you. God, you are so good, God. And we thank you, Jesus, for always putting us first when you think about us. And you put us first Years ago, you put us first, thousands of years ago, you thought of us and you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross, even yet when we were sinners, before we were even born, y'all think of that, before you even existed, before you, we even did anything, he thought about us and he thought about us and not only did he just think about us, but he made us to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He gave us favor and justification. He sanctified. He has done all of these things and through his son, Jesus. And God, we thank you that we are partakers of this better covenant, God. Whew, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, let me declare over you today. Fresh in sight and discernment because you're going to need this word for you. You're going to need this, um, this decree over you. You're going to need this anointing to really get what the Lord says. It's not like extra hard, but just so that you understand. Okay. So today I decree that you, anyone that is listening again, I didn't say who this is. This is Pursuit for His Presence Ministry, Sunday morning worship service with me, Pastor Kendra. We got Pastor Kevin on the ones and twos over here. Like, psych, it's not really the ones and twos, but the com several computers and everything. And um, we are here to give you the word from the Lord today, all right? 
So let me just decree, declare over you. So today, in the name of Jesus, we decree that you are filled with a fresh insight into all that the Spirit is speaking in this hour, especially during this word that is going forth. May heaven's discernment and insight rest upon you heavenly. May your spiritual eyes and ears be anointed with fresh oil right now in Jesus' name. We decree and declare, Pastor Kevin, we decree and declare that you will never be thwarted, deceived, or thrown off course by the entrapment of the enemy, being led out into, but being laid out in this present hour. We break the power of every lying spirit of deception trying to ensnare God's elect, that would be you, and we say that you shall see clearly in Jesus' name, in this season, in this hour, in this time, in, in the moments in which you hear this. We declare that you, we decree and declare that you will see clearly, you will hear clearly. The measure that you hear with, it will be measured back to you, not 30, not 60. We declare a hundredfold in Jesus' name. And if you agree, say, I agree. We decree and declare that you know what heaven is saying right now because I'm, I'm about to tell you what he's saying right now. We say that you, that you will experience visions, dreams, insights, and encounters from the throne of God. We say that angelic movement will be occurring around about you and that you will be positioned to be one of God's agents to decree and declare and operate in the spirit for this time that we are in right now. We decree and declare that nothing shall pull you off your course, shall blind you from the truth, and all that you are called to do shall be fulfilled in the authority of Jesus. We declare Hebrews 5 and 14 over you that says solid food belongs to those who are mature. For those who through patience have power of discernment, that you are trained to distinguish what is good from what is evil. I dec We decree and declare that over you. And if you so receive it, put in the chat, I receive it. Say, I receive it in Jesus' name. All right, now we will go into our offering message. Amen and amen. It will be from Minister. Good morning. I'm Minister Valerie Wright, and I am bringing you the offering message this morning. So, as you know, the Lord has led pursuit to purchase a building. Yay! Praise the Lord. And, um... We started the camp, the building campaign last week. I want to thank everybody who has given and who has sent in the pledge cards. Praise God. We thank you for you and we bless you in Jesus name. So um, the Lord gave me the scripture, Luke 6, 38, uh, and I'm going to read the Passion Translation. Give generously. Generous gifts will be given back to you, shaken down to make room for more. Abundant gifts will pour out upon you with such an overflowing measure that it will that it will run over the top. The measurement of your generosity becomes the measurement of your return. So, Lord, we thank you for that word. So, at, I want you all to go to the Lord and ask the Lord if you haven't already. Ask the Lord. What amount should you sow into the building campaign? Should you make a pledge? Should you do a one-time donation? $2,000, $3,000? You ask the Lord and do what he says. So you just take that to the Lord. Okay, and then after you get your amount from the Lord, I want you to go to Givelify. Now on Givelify, you could just give a, a donation to the building fund. If you go to p4hp.org, you can actually fill out the pledge card there. And then um, we will get that, and then we will add that to uh, our list of pledges. Thank you, Lord. Okay, also... Um, I want to pray over, I want to pray over 
our uh, tithes and the offerings that um, our faithful members and partners are giving. So, Lord, we just bless your holy name and we thank you for our tithes. It's a privilege for us to be able to tithe and give our offerings. We thank you, Lord, um, that according to Malachi 3.10, that you rebuke the devourer for our sakes and that you will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we will not have room enough to take in. And, Lord, according to Luke 6.38, that with the measurement that we give, that it will be measured back unto us. And we declare it so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Love you. Hello. Hello. Praise the Lord, Mr. Valerie. Glory to God. Yes, we are. Yes, we are in our campaign of giving for our building fund. Y'all, we're so close. We're so close. You don't want to get in. You don't want to miss not putting your seed in for what God is doing here at Pursuit for His Presence Ministry. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to, 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 to not be a part of that. Get your seed in the ground, especially if there's something that you need, if there's a financial need, if there's a financial uh, um, um, deficit, deficit or a deficiency or, or there's a financial need or what, put your seed in the ground. For this, it is, the, I'm telling you, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Psalm 118, come on, come on. Get on in there. Thank you so much, Valerie, uh, Minister Valerie. All right, now let's get into what the Lord, what heaven is saying. What heaven is saying right now to us right now, all right? So if you can, I want you to get your Bibles. I want you to get your Bibles, get your sword, Get your Bible, get your Bible, get your physical Bible if you can. And turn with me to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers. Amen. I had a paper towel in my Bible. Okay. To the book of Numbers. Amen. All right. The book of Numbers. Okay. All right, so in the book of Numbers, we're going to start in chapter 7. Now, let me tell you what the book of Numbers is. The book of Numbers is, is an account by Moses. Moses is writing it, okay? And in this book, um, it's a book of journeying. It's a book of the children of Israel getting themselves in order. Okay, getting themselves in order. You might say, okay, who are the children of Israel? Why is the name of the children of Israel? Okay, well, let me give you a little background before we get into the word so that you can hear. Okay, the children of Israel. All right, you know that Abraham, Abram, before he was Abraham, Abraham and Sarah were given, God came to them and was like, hey, I need you to be my man. Can you be my man? here in the earth. I need to do great things and I'm choosing you to do them through here in the earth. Okay. So Adam says, sure, you can choose me. And then God goes on to tell him, okay, so you doing that through this, I'm going to give you a child through you and your wife. So he's laughing like, ha, 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 ha. how you going to give me a child? My, my wife is old. Her eggs are dust like dust. She, she's old as dust. Okay. Her stuff on the inside has dried up. God bless her. Okay. This is what, you know, he's thinking. This is what he's like. She is old. She's going to do what? Give me a kid. Anyway. So then God says, yes, she's going to give you a child. And through this, there is going to be, you, you're going to have innumerable children. If when you look up at the stars, you're going to have more than that. He's just telling him about this vast inheritance through this bloodline that he's going to have all these kids that are going to be his now mind you he is like 90 years old now and it is like looking like please my wife is dried up so anyway 
you know the story. Sarah, she tries to, you know, conjure up something herself. And what does her husband Abram do? Go right along with the foolishness, okay? So she was like, well, let me get you with my maid. Hey, God, she can do it for you. And we can have this kid. Okay, so they have Ishmael. And what? He is not the promised kid. God bless him. God sent him and the mama off and said, y'all going to have to go. Okay, and he and he blesses them and, and gives them, you know, whatever it is they need. But he was like, y'all gonna y'all gonna have to go. All right. So then what does God do? He changes Abram's name to Abraham. He puts his God anointing down on him now because he sees that without the uh, God sees that without the anointing of God upon him, it's not going to go down. It, it ain't going down. Honey, I think I put a piece of paper a manila paper like this in that bag over there can you bring it to me it has my my lineage on it it might be in the trash can god bless all right because i'm going i'm going to endeavor to do this from memory all right so here we go abraham is a hundred he changes his name sarai is now sarah yes they got the stamp of god on them and here they go producing what this promised child here he comes here the little boy comes. He, yes, baby, I believe that's it. <laughs> Here he comes. The promise of the promised child. Don't judge me about my piece of paper right here. All right. So Abraham is now in the Israelite. Okay. So when he's a hundred years old, Isaac, the promised child, is born. This man is a hundred. Okay. And Isaac is born. Now listen, from Isaac, here we go with this lineage. When Isaac was 60 years old, y'all, this must mean these people are young. I'm trying to tell you. All right. When Isaac was 60 years old, he had a set of twins, two boys, Esau and Jacob. All right. Now I want you to track with me. Now, you know what their mama did. The mama had a liking to a keen for Jacob. So what did she do when it was time for Isaac to give the blessing? She conjures up her own self, her own stuff, and pushes Jacob up to go and get the blessing. Because first of all, Isaac was blind. You know, it says he's blind and he couldn't really see. Anyway, so Jacob gets the blessing. Now, they are twins. They're twins, but it says that the firstborn is to get the blessing from the father, okay? So that it's passed down. So the mama tricks, okay, so let's, we're back, we're tracking him. So the mama says, no, I want Jacob to have it. So Jacob gets it, and once he's got the blessing on him, it can't be erased, okay? Our God doesn't do backtracking, all right? He's got to keep moving forward. All right, so through Jacob, now Jacob, a.k.a., is called Israel. I'm going somewhere. Come on, track with me. Jacob is called Israel. That's what we call Jacob now. So Israel. So Israel has some sons. A lot of sons. He has Joseph. You know who Joseph is. Mm -hmm. Joseph, many coats. The one that dreams, the one that, you know, goes around telling his brothers that, oh, one day you're going to bow down to the row. Yeah, they're going to bow down to him. And they're like, uh, no, we're not. So we need to get rid of you because it seems like you are already favored by our parents. You got to go. All right. So anyway, so Jacob slash Israel, a.k.a. Israel, has all of these sons. OK, not saying he doesn't have daughters, but you knew then back then they talked about the son because the son had the seed to pass it on down. Anyway. All right. So Joseph, the sons, the other 12 sons, because it's 13 of them they're making mention of that Israel has who is Jacob. So Joseph, they sell him into slavery. You know, they throw him in a pit, all this different stuff. He ends up in Egypt and here we go. All right. So they are in, they are in Egypt. Why do they get to Egypt? Because there's famine in the land. All right. So all the brothers come to Egypt they then realize that, oh my God, Joseph is the one who is ruling up in here, telling stuff, telling what to do. And it, this is our brother. So Joseph says, where's, where's, where's my father? Where, where's daddy? Where is Israel? Where's J, AKA Jacob? And they're like, let us go get him. So they go and get him. 
He makes provision for them to be in Egypt. All is well. It's going well. Remember, Joseph has these dreams about this seven year of famine. So, um, so what does he do? He stocks up. They stockpile all this stuff so that they never run out of stuff. Okay. During this famine year. So then keep tracking with me. All right. So then what happens? Joseph dies. Boom, boom, boom. And then what happens? The king, the Pharaoh that is in place, the next king, the next whoever in charge, doesn't know nothing about Joseph. Who he is, the clout he had, what he stood for, nothing. So by this time, Joseph dies. Y'all, the, the children of Israel, which are Jacob's grandchildren and Jacob's grandchildren's children and children's children and children's children, children y'all, they start multiplying. Like roaches. And it's not like roaches. Let me not say like roaches. Because the blessing of the Lord was upon them. Remember this. The blessing was already pronounced on Abraham. The blessing was there. Which means you're to be fruitful. You're to multiply. You're to replenish the earth. And you're sub to, to subdue it. So Joseph dies. These, these Israelites. A.K.A. Jacob's children. They are multiplying out of control. So the people in Egypt, the, the Pharaoh in Egypt is like, hold up. Who are these people? It is too many of them and not enough of us. And they were what? Afraid. The Egyptians were afraid. So what did they do? They decided to enslave. Now I don't even know how to do it, but they enslaved all of the children of Israel. Why? Because they were fearing them. So what does the enemy do when he does differences? It, it was almost like they were racist. Woo, look at this. The Egyptians were like, who are they? We are afraid of them. They are different. There's something different about them. So because of that difference, the sl slavery is instilled, is installed on to, upon them, okay? Instilled, installed, whatever word you want to use, upon them. All right, keep tracking with me, keep tracking with me. All right, so here we go. The children of Israel, Jacob's family is there. And remember, this is all important because Abraham is the daddy, is, is the great, great granddad. And all of his lineage, they are enslaved. And God, because he has a covenant, with Abraham, with the daddy, he hears their cries. They begin to cry out as they are in Egypt enslaved, like, oh God, help us, God, help us, God. Now, y'all, this is very important. One reason as to why God told Abraham to tell his children and to tell his children, to keep the lineage going about God is so that it would always be at the forefront of their mind. So it would never be stale so that they would know the covenant God and they would know what they have in this God, who this God is to them. But somehow y'all, this stuff got watered down. Okay. So the, the children of Israel, Jacob's you know, seed, Abraham's seed, they are crying out to God. God hears them and is like, ooh, ooh. These are my people. I've got to go and do something about it. So he raises up Moses. Moses is born. Moses is sent. You know, look how he did that. Moses was, they were trying to kill the people. So they put the baby on a raft, sent him down the river. This is Moses. And then who finds him? Somebody in the powerful king's house and Pharaoh's house finds him, the daughter. And then raises him as her own. So then Moses is raised as an Egyptian, but really he's an Israelite. So then he becomes the one who is going to be the, 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 the person who God delivers the Israelites through. All right. So come and track with me in numbers. Okay. So numbers chapter seven. So they have Moses, they have done all this. They've done all these plagues. They've let them go. They've crossed the Red Sea. And here they are in the desert, okay? They are protected. All is good. All is well. It has been, um, so it is two years 
They, they've been there about two years. And now they're not just twiddling their thumbs during that two years. God is giving them instruction on what they need to do. A tabernacle is being erected. Not built. It's not something that stays as a permanent thing. It's, a ta it's something that they put together, they pick up, and they keep moving. All right. So chapter 7. There's a setup of the tabernacle. All right. And you might say, oh, well, God, they had a tabernacle. What about our tabernacle? Well, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 gives you, a tells us where the temple, a.k.a. tabernacle, is today. Because you might say, well, hey, they were protected and they got a tabernacle. What about us? 1 Corinthians 6 chapter 19 says, Now we are, who are we? We are the temple. It says, or do you not know? And I can read it from here. For surely, sure, he wants you to know that your body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's where the Holy Spirit lives. And the Spirit is in you and he is a gift from God. And you no longer are your own. So, chapter 9. Go with me there. It all starts to begin. So in chapter 7, like I said, the setup of the tabernacle. Back in Exodus chapter 25 is when God tells Moses to come here. And he gives him all these instructions about a temple he wants to build. Now, why is he building this temple? He says in Exodus 25 verse, chap verse 8, he says, so that I may dwell with them. He wants to be with us, just like he was with Adam in the garden. He wanted to do, what did he do with Adam? He walked with him in the cool of the day. He wanted to be with his people. So he was like, build this temple, build it just like this. I need you to do it just like this so that I may dwell among my people so I can be with them. So then go to verse nine. So. In verse 9 is instituted is, or is introduced into them the guidance system that God is going to use to show them where to go. All right? And chapter 9, verse 15, excuse me. Chapter 9, verse 15 is where the guidance system is where we talk about the guidance system. Now it says, on the day that the tabernacle was erected, so from the very day it was erected, back in the book of Exodus, from that very day, the cloud covered the tabernacle. The tent of the test is called the tent of testimony. And at the evening, there was over the temple the appearance of fire until the morning. So it was always. The cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. Now I'm going to go ahead and read chapter 17. When the cloud was filled, with, excuse me, when the cloud lifted from over the tabernacle, then after it, the children of Israel journeyed. And in the place where the cloud settled, there the children of Israel camped. All right. So you might be saying, what was the word from heaven. All right, let me stop here and fill you in. So on Wednesday morning, early Wednesday morning, I was simply awakened, whether in the body or out of the body. I don't really know. Just as Paul, I, we, I don't know. But I began to have a conversation with the Lord. He began to talk to me about the children of Israel. Now listen, I don't go to bed thinking about no children of Israel. Who was going to bed thinking about that? I'm going to bed like, ooh. Um, you know, I, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon us. And I am like expecting this dream and for him to tell me direction and, and, and all these good things. Well, I was like awakened in the middle of the night. And he, he was, I was awakened to him talking to me about the children of Israel. 
Now he coined a frame, a phrase, excuse me, and called them, um, I, 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 it hasn't come back to me yet, but he coined a phrase and called them something. Okay. So just pray with me that it comes back to me. Um, but he was telling me about them and the very last thing he said to me was don't be like them. Don't take 40 years to do something. So I fell asleep. I fell back to sleep because it was the middle of the night. So I, I fell back to sleep. And when I woke up, I thought about it for a quick second. But you know, when you wake up, you got to keep moving. So I was moving, forgot about it. Um, and when I got back in the bed on Friday night, it's when the Lord brought it back to me. He was like, what about, you know, what did I tell you about the children of Israel? So I knew that that meant I needed to go and study it. I needed to go and study and see what they actually did for me not to be like them. What God was actually saying to me. Okay. You know, we're familiar with the story of that, but I didn't know how many days it was supposed to actually take them to get there. Not off the top of my head. I didn't know that. I didn't know certain details of this journey. So I'm going to endeavor to say it to you. And how I know this is confirmation from the Lord. Uh, Minister Easley, Minister Tomasa called me on Friday and said, Hey, do you want to know the revelation God gave me? I said, what is it? And the revelation that she gave her lines up with what we are talking about today. So that is how I know that I know that I know that I know this is a word from heaven that he needs you to know right now. Okay, so let's go on. So we have this cloud, this GPS in, in chapter nine of numbers. We have this GPS, which is a cloud and a pillar. So it was a cloud by day and a pillar by night. I know sometimes you think of just a little cloud over the tabernacle, but you have to think about this. They were in the desert. So this cloud was not only over the tabernacle, it was over all of them. All of the children, because we're in the desert and here in this desert, y'all, it was hotter than the Sahara. Okay. And I've never been to the Sahara. Think about the hottest place you can go. And it was hotter like that, hot like fire. Okay. So they were hot. So God and in his infinite goodness was like, not only is this going to be your GPS to guide you, I'm going to use this cloud, which is my presence to protect you from the beaming of the sun. And I'm going to use this pillar, which was a fire that they used by night, to warm all of you by night. Because, of course, we're in the desert. So in the desert, when the sun goes down, it gets cool. So he did that. And there we called it, the, it was, it's called, people call it the Shekinah glory of God. Now, what is the Shekinah glory? It is the residence. Shekinah means residence. It means that, 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 that God resided with them through this cloud and through this pillar. All right. So now you're like, well, I wish I had that. Look what the children of Israel had. Look, look what they had. They had, they knew what to do when the cloud got up and it moved. What did they do? They moved when the, when, so they knew exactly where to go. When it turned left, they turned left. When it turned right, they turned right. When it stopped, they stopped. So it was so easy for them, right? Because God was in the cloud. He was the one moving it. And they knew exactly where to go. And you're like, well, I wish I had that. Hmm. I wish I had that. Because now, oh my, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Oh God. But listen. In this new covenant that we are in, God has done something better for us. We don't have guidance from the outside. We now have a guide on the inside of us. God was like, I got to do better for them now. We have a guide on the inside. And you can see that in John 14, 26, John 16, 13, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 
chapter 10 through 13, Romans chapter 8, 14, and Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Now, I'm going to read those to you because I don't want you to forget about the guide you have on the inside. And it's not like this cloud that got up and moved. Because think about it. If the children of Israel, if they weren't right there when the cloud lifted, then they didn't know what to do. If they had been off, and I read throughout here, and I don't remember where I read it, whether it was in Exodus or, or in Numbers. If, if they weren't there at the time the cloud moved, then they didn't know. So if they came back to the assembly, then they would be gone. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? So it was like you had to stay there. You couldn't do anything other than being right there, okay? There was no venturing out to go get anything. So John 14, 26 says, that the Holy Spirit is the helper. It says, but the helper, the spirit whom the father will send in my name, he does what? He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. John 16 verse 13. It's talking about the Holy Spirit, the guide you have on the inside. It says that when that guide on the inside of truth comes, he is going to guide you. Not guidance, be inside guiding you into all truth. For he does not, he's not even going to speak on his own authority. He's not going to do that. He is going to, to tell you whatever he hears them speak. Who is them? Whatever the father says is what he's going to tell you. And he's, he's going to declare that to you. All right. First Corinthians 2 verse 10 through 13. I'm endeavoring to show you this, that we have something better, okay? 1 Corinthians 2, chapter 10 through 13. And I'm just going to highlight several of them. It says, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. Now, how are we going to get the things that we need? Through the Spirit. For the Spirit, the Holy Spirit does what? It searches everything, even the depths of God, the deep things of God. Now, go down. It says, so also no one comprehends the thoughts of God, except the spirit of God. So that means that you can know the thoughts of God. Those are the deep things of God. It says the thoughts towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11, the thoughts towards you, thoughts to give you a hope and a future. The thoughts, the Holy Spirit now is on the inside so that you can know the thoughts. Y'all, the children of Israel didn't have the thoughts. They had the cloud. They had the pillar. They had where Moses was then, but the thoughts, it was a whole process to get the thoughts. Okay. Now you can just, it can just bubble up from down here blah, 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 to your mind so that you know the thoughts. Romans eight verse 14 says for all that are led by the spirit of God, we are the sons of God. Romans eight twenty six says. Likewise, the spirit does what helps us in our weaknesses. So we have a better thing. I know a lot of us say, well, if I was on earth back then and Jesus was here, it would be all better. If I could, be, if I was like them, if I was like the children of Israel, the cloud would leave me and I would know exactly where to go and what to do. Well, guess what? God gave us something better. He gave us the ability to walk by faith which is his faith and not by sight. We don't have to, to see something to move. We have to know it and believe it. So let's go on. Chapter 10. In chapter 10, and I'm just building about how God gave all of these things to them. He was meeting all of their needs. In Numbers chapter 10, um, it's about trumpets. And he was telling them, he said, make for yourself two silver trumpets. All right. And then he told them how to use the trumpets. He said, the trumpets are going to be for summoning the people to assemble together. It's going to be for directing them of when they need to break up into the camps. It's going to be for protection. Because when you blow it, it's going to be for protection. When you blow it, it'll be for deliverance. And the different ways you blow it is going to mean something different. This is what God told them. So in verse 11 of chapter 10, it says that on the 20th day of the second year, the journey begins from Mount Sinai. Now you might say 20 ye two years. What? 
Yeah, it was two years because all before that, God had to get things in order. He had to tell them how to build in Exodus. He had to tell them how to build the tabernacle. He gave strict instructions on what should be done and all of these things and how to do the lampstand and, and then anoint these people and then get the group of people and I need some elders and pick some elders. All these instructions, it took that long to get them in order. He, God had to have some order to all these hundreds of thousands of people. Okay, so that they could move smoothly through the desert to the promised land. Well, how sure would you know? Serious talking. This now they, they, they begin their journey in chapter 10, verse 11. From Mount Sinai to Kadesh Bardim. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. Was supposed to be an 11 day journey to the beginning of the opening of Canaan. Oh, the, 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 the opening of where Canaan land was. It was supposed to be 11 days. Little did they know that because of the goings on, 11 days would be turned into 38 years. Now, I'm going to stop here so I can tell you something. Remember God said to me Wednesday morning when he woke me up, don't do like the children of Israel did. Don't let it take 40 years to do something. So what was supposed to be 11 days from Mount Sinai to entering the promised land turned out to be 38 years. Now, why did it take 38 years? Here we go. Chapter 11. Turn your Bible with me. Let me come, before we get to chapter 11, let me come back to something very, I think, was wonderful. In chapter 10, when he told them to make these trumpets, when they sounded a certain alarm by using the trumpet, God said, listen, now this is an indication in chapter 10, verse 8. This is an indication that sometimes they're going to have to go to war. To get what they need to get. God says in chapter 10 verse 8. He's, no that says a 9. Chapter 9. It says and if you go to war in your land. This is what he tells the sons. This is what he tells them. If you go to war in your land. What is, what is their land? The promised land. It's okay baby you don't have to put that one up. Against the enemy. He says if you go to war in your land against the enemy. That opposes you. Then you will blow an alarm with the trumpets and you will be remembered before the Lord your God and you will be saved from your enemies. So here they're telling, he, God is telling them off rip. You're going to go into, but maybe they didn't have, they didn't have discernment. They didn't have Jesus. They didn't have Holy Spirit, the God on the inside. All they knew to do is to follow the cloud. But we have something better. We have the guide on the inside. We have the discernment of God. We have the mind of Christ. We can know the thoughts, feelings, purposes, and plans of God's heart. Why? Because it says that the Holy Spirit, the guide on the inside, searches the deep things of God, even the thoughts, to reveal them to us, to tell us things to come, to tell us what to do. Amen. So, now, chapter 11. Just thought I want to put that in there. So now, chapter 11. The complaining starts. Y'all, I want you to know that every time they needed something. Now, mind you, they had already been in. They had crossed the Red Sea, and it had been two years and 20 days from the time they start. I don't know at what day after this two years and 20 days. It might have been day 30. Or day 40 of the two years. It might have been two years and day 40. I don't know. But for some reason, they forgot. They forgot who their God was. They forgot the power in their God. And they began, and they forgot what God brought them out of. And they began to complain. 
And not just any old regular, not just any complaining, but the complaining. It says in chapter 11, verse 1, now when the people complained openly before the Lord, the Lord heard and it says his anger burned. Now listen, as you read throughout this, you need to remember and put into your mind that there is no savior. There is no Jesus. So when sin happens, sin has to be punished. Not people, sin has to be punished because God is a holy God. That is why he sent Jesus and exhausted his anger and wrath on Jesus so he would never have to do that concerning us. Okay, so... Be in the right mindset. That's why I pray for discernment for you when you read through this. So you won't be like, see, I knew God was like that. I knew he went around like bonking people on the head. I knew he went around giving people disease. Remember, we're in a better covenant. We're in the new covenant. Jesus is our savior. He is our now our mediator, not Moses. Jesus is our mediator now. And all the anger, all the anguish, all the sin was put into the body of Jesus. He became your sin so that you could be the righteousness and we could be the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So I'm not, I'm not taking you through this so that you can be like, yeah, that's, yeah, I knew God was like that. No, 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 no. The point so that I want you to know is that there's no savior here in the book of Numbers. Jesus has not come. So God has to deal with them according to the covenant that he made with Abraham and then the, co the covenant that he made with Moses. So when there is sin, there is, there is a consequence to sin. But now, be in your right mind, but now when there is sin, there is forgiveness for sin. There is the blood of Jesus covering over, not just covering your sin, but remitting it as far from you. Amen. So it says God burned with anger. And this happened. So then why did this happen? They overly complained. And then in verse four, it says the mixed multitude that was among them, the mixed multitude lusted. And then what did the children of Israel do? They went crying and weeping and complaining. Now you might say, what do you mean? Who are this mixed multitude? The mixed multitude was biracial families. So they weren't, so the Egyptians and the Israelites had kids. They got married, they had kids. So there was a mixed race now, along with those who were just Israelites, okay? They married each other. So if you, if the, if the Egyptian and the Israelite, they married and they had kids, then they came along, right? They came on this journey. They were included, this, this mixed, the, the kids came on this journey as well. So... They would, in their minds, if, 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 if you had an Egyptian um, sin nature, then you want to go back to Egypt because you think it's good. And the children of Israel had a sin nature too, where they forgot about the slavery that they had been in. They forgot about how bad it was. You, remember the, you know the scripture that says, forget not all his benefits. They forgot the covenant benefits. Yes, they did. They forgot them. And what did they do? Complain. They complained about food. And you can see it right here in verse, starts in verse four it's, or five. It says, we remember the fish that was in Egypt. We remember the free cucumbers. We remember the free melons. We remember the free leeks, the free onions, the free garlic. First of all, that doesn't sound like anything I want to eat. But y'all, all of that was stuff in the ground. It was back, back breaking food everything that grows in the ground that they had to go out there and get for the egyptians to eat remember they were their slaves so they're like oh the good old days y'all how many of you know the good old days are not good days what did we learn last week about the good old days through um through keith moore they're not good and stop saying that they're good old because they're not all right so let's continue on so they complained and how do you know when you complain and when you doubt start in, in, in the spirit of death, it is contagious. Y'all, it got so, this virus of complaining got so much that in chapter 12, it even got to the leadership where Miriam and Aaron, 
began complaining about petty stuff. Here they go complaining, and the Lord heard them. What, now, what they complaining about? They're compl they start complaining about Moses' wife, saying how they must not like her, or maybe she said something to them and they didn't like. I don't know what it was, but they didn't like her. And they might say, people might say, oh, they didn't like her because she was black. She was from Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Let me stop you there. Zipporah was his first wife. You all know that. Zipporah was a Midianite. She was an Arab. She was from Arab descent. So Zipporah must have died. And then he married this lady from Ethiopia. But for whatever reason, they didn't like her. Not because of her color. Not because, they, we don't know why. It doesn't say why. But they just started complaining about her. So the complaining virus was spreading even to the leadership. Now, this complaint got to God. God heard their complaints. Now, verse four, this is what God said. He said, when he heard that complaining, it says, and the Lord spoke at once to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Remember, they're the leadership of all of them, of the Israelites. He said, come out, you there, you three, to the tent of meeting. Come on to the tent of meeting. And those three, they came out to the tent of meeting. Verse 5. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood. This is chapter 12, verse 5. That's okay, baby. You don't have to. I'm sorry. Chapter 12, verse 5. Then the Lord. I didn't give you that. Okay. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud. This is to the leadership. Because first of all, it's one thing for the Israelites to be complaining. It is another thing for the leadership to be complaining. So he says to them, he stands in the tabernacle. It says, the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood. That means there was an actual being that stood there, all right, in the opening of the tabernacle. And he called Aaron and Miriam and he said, come here. Let me talk to y'all, because I think y'all done lost your minds. He stood, they both came forward, and then he said to them, Hear now my words. The Lord said, If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known in a vision, and I'm going to speak to them in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is entrusted with all my house. Face to face, I speak with him clearly. And not in riddles. So he doesn't even understand. No, no, no. The likeness of the Lord, he said, will he behold. He's going to be looking like the likeness of the Lord. Then why were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So basically God is saying, the Lord is saying, Hold up. Now, I made you leadership, and you as leadership should know better than to speak against leadership. Y'all, even David in the Bible knew not to, res not to respect the anointed. He was like, get your mouth off the anointed. David knew not to speak against the anointed. Y'all, God was like, let me tell you something. Get your mouth off Moses. Because if you're talking about Moses, then you're talking about me because I'm the one who gave him the charge to do all this. I called you to be alongside him to help him, but, but you need to get your mind right, is what he said. All right? So, this, God, is, God is like, get, get your mind right. Get, get your mouth off my man. So then let's go on. Chapter 13. Here we start the reconnaissance mission. Chapter 13 was a 40-day mission. And in this 40 days, and a reconnaissance means that it's the act of going in and gaining info about the enemy. To visually observe about the activities, the resources, and the geographic characteristics of a land, of a place, of your enemy. That was the reconnaissance. And, and, and the Lord told Moses to pick 
12 people and to send them on. He said, get the heads of each one and send them on. All right. So what does he do? He does that. He, he, is, he calls them forth and says, hey, the Lord wants y'all to go and he wants you to go and to spy on this land. He wants you to go in the land and see what's there. They are there for 40 whole days. Okay. So then they come back. That's in chapter 13. They come back. And now it's time for a report. So verse 27, here we go. Caleb's report is first. Now before Caleb starts his report, in verse 26, they show them the fruit from this land. It's bigger than a baby's head. Grapes bigger than a baby's head. Okay? He, he shows them these grapes and is like, look, this is what. Now you have to remember this is the promised land. This is the land he keeps telling them all about. That this is the land I've got for you. It is land that is flowing with milk and honey. This is what I want you to do. These are my plans for you. This is what I want you to do. This is my plans for you. This is what I've got for you. Here is what I've got for you. And it's greatness. So Caleb, in his report, sees through the eyes of God. Now let's read verse 27 through 30. And it all has to do with the eyes that you read through, that, that you see things through. Verse 27, it says, they reported to him, Caleb and Jacob, report to him. I mean, Joseph, sorry. Report to him and said, we came to the land where you sent us and surely it does flow with milk and honey. This is exactly what God said. God said that it's true. And this is the fruit of it. Look at this fruit as big as a baby's head. However, they say, the people, they are strong that dwell in the land, and the cities, they are fortified, and very great. And also, we saw the children of Anak. We saw them there. The, Amalekite, the Amalekites, they dwell in the land. The, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites, they dwell in the mountains. The Canaanites, they dwell by the sea. Okay? But Caleb says, listen, listen, calm down, calm down, everybody. Listen to me. But let us go. Let us go up at once and possess what God says belongs to us. For we are well able, we are able to overcome everything that we have seen in the land. That's what Caleb says. But then here come the majority. These 10 complaining negative Nancys, negative was it Neils? Because they're men. These negative men, Neils. Here they come. This is what the, the eyes that they see through. Here's their report. Verse 31 through 33. They're not seeing through the eyes of God. They are seeing through the eyes of, I don't know what, some hot mess. Verse 31 says, But the men that went up with him, this the, the ten negative Neils, we are not able to go up against the people because they are stronger than we. They gave the children of Israel a bad report, saying the land through which we have gone in as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come from the giants. They're giants. Oh, my God, they're giants. And in our eyes, we were like grasshoppers. And so we were in their eyes. Also, we were grasshoppers in their eyes. First of all, that was a lie from the pits of hell. Because if you go into the book of Joshua, chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, that's when Rahab and the spies. Remember Rahab? When Rahab hides, because uh, Jacob and K they sin, Joshua and Caleb, they sin, not 10, not 12 this time, but 2. He, they send two spies and these two spies into the land because they're going to they overtake it. So they got smart this time. They only need two to agree, which is where any two agree. They got smart. They had the wisdom of God. They had discernment of something on them. Okay, so they didn't send 10 the most to bring back this nasty report. They sent two. And in that two, Rahab says to them, oh, my God, we have been so scared of you all coming. Because we heard about what your God did for you. 
Go read that. Joshua chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. We heard what your God did. We heard that your God cleared the, 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 the Red Sea. Pick the thing up so y'all can walk across. Who does that? We heard how your God took care of y'all in the desert. We heard how your God put plagues on the Egyptians. And we were scared and our, our knees were knocking. That's what we are scared of y'all. So when this, these 10 spies came back with this whack report, it was a report of lies. It was a report of details. How do you know the devil? Have you ever heard the devils in the details? They gave way too many details. Now, remember the, the report Caleb gave, he just said, yes, they are, the Amalekites are there, the Hittites are there, the Jebusites are there. Yeah, they're there. The Annex, they're there. But they didn't even tell them that, ooh, they're giants. Ooh, they're this. Ooh, they're that. No, they didn't give them any details like that. They just said, yes, they're there. But we're well able to go and do what God has said we can do because it was almost like Jacob, I mean, excuse me, like Joshua and Caleb remembered the crossing of the Red Sea. They remembered the covenant. So they weren't complaining. Y'all, and I'm going to stop here and we're going to continue next week. So the, my question to you is that I want you to ponder in on all week is whose report will you believe? Y'all, complaining got them nowhere. Complaining got them complacent. It got them stuck for 38 years. And something the Holy Spirit told me while I was getting dressed, he said, that's the reason why God gave y'all his faith. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, have the faith of God, that he gave us his faith. He said, I had to give you my faith. So that you would not walk by sight. Because I want you to remember, God told them in, in 13, the Lord spoke to Moses and told them to send the spies to see the land. So they saw and were paralyzed. They saw and started complaining. They saw and the fear that the majority had. And how many of you know the majority is not the best thing always? That is always the minority or, or, that see differently. Okay, just because it's the majority doesn't mean it's right. Okay, so they saw and took on the fear report. They took on the doom and gloom report. They took on the complaining report. Instead of taking on the report of God, which says, this is a land I've already given it to you. Go and take it. Remember, I highlighted in, in chapter 10, where he said, when you sound the trumpet in an alarm fashion, I'm going to come and remember. He said, when you go into war in your land, that I'm going to come and I am going to deliver y'all. You're going to win. You're going to win. Y'all, that was only two, cha uh, three chapters back. They forgot that fast. That fast. And they began to complain. So God said to me when I was getting dressed, he said, he had to give us his faith. So that we would not be stagnated by sight, but that we could use his faith to get things done. And that's why we don't walk, we we walk by faith and not by sight. What is faith? I don't I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it in my physical eyes. Because y'all, if we saw what was going around us in our physical eyes, we would never move. We'd be stagnant. We would be afraid if we know God says, go over there and buy that building. If God, if, if we knew all, first of all, if we could see all the demonic stuff around it, if we could see all the obstacles and whatever the enemy was going to put it up ahead, we wouldn't do anything, right? We would just complain and say, how you want me to do that? How you want me to do that? How you want me to do that? Don't you see them, God? Do you see them, God? Don't you see that obstacle right there? See that thing that they're going to try to make us fall into? Do you see that? Do you see that? So God was like, no, no, no. I, I'm doing better for you than the, than, I, than the children of Israel had. Through your Savior, through Jesus, you're now going to have faith, my faith. So that you can walk by faith and not by sight. So that you can actually attain the things 
You can hit the goal. Your needs are met by faith. So nothing stops you. So that is why he gave us the ability to not walk by sight, but to walk by faith. Now y'all, get your communion. I'm done. We're going to continue this next week. We're going to talk about the children of Israel and their complaining and how what God was offering them was better than what they actually thought he was. Bless the Lord. So get your communion. Y'all, your homework this week is whose report will you believe? I'm not just talking about a doctor's report. I'm talking about when God tells you to do something, what do you do? What do I do? You, you, we start complaining about, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. My credit score is this. My something is that. Y'all, that's all complaining. It's complaining. God, where's my stuff at? You want me to do this, but where's my stuff at? I've been doing this, but where's my stuff at? Y'all, he, God was basically saying to me, it's too much complaining going on. It's too much doubt going on. It's too much unbelief going on. It's not enough walking by faith. And it's too much walking by sight. Y'all, they could actually see what they were going into. God sent them to see what it looked like. This flourishing, beautiful land. To see the fruit. And they still couldn't do it. So for those of us seeing, well, if I could just see what he wants me to do, I would do it. Would you? Because they didn't. And they were a part of the covenant. They had the covenant promise on them. Y'all, God wants us to be believing him. Believing him at his word. Whether it's his logos, whether it's written in the Bible, or whether you hear him a rhema word. And I don't mean hear from here. You hear and hear. Because he guides you on the inside. God wants us to move from being complainers. To being people that walk by faith. He wants, he doesn't want us to take 40 year journeys. He wants us to be on 11 day journeys. Amen. So for those of you who said, I'm ready for my stuff. I'm ready for this to end. I'm ready for this sickness to end. I'm ready for all these things to end. Y'all, it ain't, but it's, God says it's not but 11 days. He was like, so don't make it 40 years. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word on today. We thank you, God. For the enlightenment on today. God we thank you from. We thank you for. Heaven's instructions. We thank you God. For your love for us. That you. Correct us lovingly. In our sleep. When I'm sleeping. He wakes us, me up and lovingly corrects me. Instead of having me go out and be embarrassed. By things. You know, when, when, when things happen and you think, oh, God is embarrassed. That's not God embarrassing you. He doesn't, he doesn't have to do that. He tells us through dreams, through visions, from, from your, your knowing on the inside. He doesn't outwardly do anything to us. Okay? So for those of us who are looking for something on the outside, stop. I'm looking for a sign. What? You're not the children of Israel. Your, your stuff comes from the inside. Our stuff comes from the inside. One word from God should set our course straight. Amen? And that's what we're going to do on this week. We, God, we repent. I come before you. I stand before you. And Lord, I repent on behalf of everyone who is watching and will ever watch. We repent for complaining. We repent for backbiting. We repent for not believing you because you are good and you desire to give unto us what you have already set aside for us. God, we repent for backbiting. We repent, God. And we thank you for the mind of Christ. We thank you, God, for the ability to walk by faith. Your faith, which means it's going to actually get done and not by sight. So God, we thank you for the healing of our bodies. 
We thank you for your word. We're going to bite down on your word. Whatever word you give us regarding our healing, we're going to bite down and we're not going to let it go. We're going to take that word all the way to the bank because it's good. We're going to take that check all the way to the bank because it's good. We thank you, God, for your love for us. Now eat of the healing of Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. We thank you for the blood shed on the cross as the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you that our sins have been forgiven. They're remitted. They're far from us. Never to be held against us again. Now we drink and tell Satan, us drinking this, tell Satan, you cannot use those things against us because we have, our sins have been remitted and Satan, we are forgiven. Now drink. Y'all, I know that was long, but I wanted to endeavor to give you what heaven is saying to us right now. Amen and amen. Now, don't forget on Tuesday, we have um, healing school. Almost forgot if you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, simply repeat after me, okay? Repeat after me, say, God. I'm a sinner, and I believe that you, through your son Jesus, that he died on the cross and he was raised again to life. And I believe that because of that, I am now forgiven of my sins. Now I ask you to come into my heart and take my life and do something with it. Ooh. Now remember, we're saying to do something with it because 1 Corinthians, it says that in Corinthians that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost and our, our bodies are not ours anymore. Once you receive Jesus Christ, you belong to him. And that means you're giving him permission to tell you what to do, where to go, how to do it, how to get there. Amen. So if you said that for the first time, I welcome you to the body of Christ. And if you need some, some help in that area, inbox us. We'll send you things. We'll pray with you. We'll get you in touch with one of our ministers that will love on you, that will pray with you. Anything you need, okay? And I don't mean if you need a million dollars. We're going to pray with you so you can get your bills paid. Ha <laughs> ha, power of agreement. Okay? So tomorrow morning, Monday, 7.30 a.m., ministers, executive pastors, Al and Shonda Tucker will be before you at 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Then on Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, Healing, Healing University. Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. will be Bible study. And this coming Sunday, the 20th, I believe the date is the 20th, we will have in-person service at McCabe Community Center at 10 a.m. In person, which means I need to see your face there. I love you, Jesus loves you, and remember, faith living is good living. Have a great day.